Alright students, good day. I just want to quickly make this video to, as promised, explain to you the part of the component of your CSEC SBA for biology that is called the planning and designing labs. Of course, you will be assigned a few of them to be done and then you will hear the planning and designing lab being referred to as something else. And that's the proposal. Now a planning and designing lab is called a proposal if it is that you've selected it to then carry out. So you would have planned um, a lab, designed it, and then you would then say, okay, I really wanna test this one. And so when you do carry it out, it is then referred to as the implementation. But let's just go back to the beginning and talk about what the planning and designing lab really is, how you get your marks, how it is supposed to be laid out. All right. So, you know, just go back to first form when you were introduced to working like a scientist. You were taught about you know, the materials that scientists work with, how they work safely, how they ensure that they're doing a fair test. This is the same thing. And it's just that now you're being graded you know, for the CXE exam, just a part of your school-based assessment. So here we go. So in essence, what you'll be provided with is a situation or a problem or an observation. And this, these are usually really simple. These are things we see happening around us in our world. And we just go ahead and create what is called a hypothesis. So based on the observation that you're given, you then write an, a, a hypothesis. You get two marks for making sure you um, clearly state it and that it has elements in it, words that can be tested. For example, so of course, we look at measurements. Are you going to be um, talking about height? Are you going to be talking about mass? Are you going to be talking about temperature and its effect on something? But it must be stated clearly so that you can then run a test using some measurable, um, um, right, some measurable factor. All right, after you state your hypothesis, the next thing is that you will have to write an aim. And you've written aims all the time. If you look at the labs we've done so far, you would see quite a bit of aim, aims. So based on your topic, based on your hypothesis, you then say, okay, this plan of a lab is designed to test so-and-so. And of course it will be linked to the hypothesis. So it must be, again, it must be testable. Number three, you get a mark for just listing all, the materials and the apparatus that you would you would think would be needed to carry out this plan that you have in your mind that you're now putting on paper. Number four, you get two marks for outlining a procedure. Now, if you notice when we're doing our experiments, we have been writing the method in the past tense because we've done them, we've carried them out and so we're reporting. In this case, when it's a planning and designing lab, you are telling someone, because this is your plan, that this is what you know the steps would be if you were to carry this out. So your procedure is not written in the past tense. You give it stepwise. Of course, you're giving steps as to what you are doing to run the test or what you are doing if you were to carry out the test. And then you're saying, how, what steps are you also planning to take 
to collect information based on your observations. So the procedure needs to have two parts. How you're testing step by step and how you're collecting data step by step. Finally, well, not finally, um, number five, you're getting two marks for your expected results. What this means is you don't know what your results would be, but you want to have an idea of how you will be putting those results down on paper. So do not write that you expect to get a particular result because you don't know, it's a plan. But what we encourage is that you have a table that shows how you would capture those results. And that is why in your method you would say, okay, maybe you would check your system every five minutes. And so your table would show that at five minutes, you know, what this would be, at 10 minutes, what information, right? So you, you show how is it that you want this data to be presented if it were to be collected, right? Six, you get a mark for having variables and variables are like factors. So a control variable is something you don't want to change for the duration of this experiment. You do not want this changing. You want to keep this constant. A manipulated variable is, is one thing that you're changing while this experiment is going to be run. So maybe you have some plants, some seedlings. You wanna make sure that when you control the variable of giving them water, you're giving them all water from the same pipe at the same time, the same amount. But if we're manipulating an, a, a variable or a factor, we're saying, okay, I'm gonna put one in sandy soil. I'm putting one in loam. So this is something you're changing and that manipulated variable is then what gives you the responding variable. Because maybe you're doing all this, so you're keeping the, the water constant, you're keeping the sunlight constant. You're manipulating just the soil, the type of soil being used to then get your responding variable in terms of, okay, does this affect how many leaves? Does it affect how tall our plants will get? So your responding variable is really the result. What, what is changing when we are carrying out this experiment? What do you expect to change? All right, and then you have a mark for having either a limitation, a source of error, or a precaution. So your limitation is something you really can't control. No matter what you do as the experimenter, this is something out of your, you can't control if, suddenly the rain just starts to fall and your plant, your seedlings were outside. You can't, you can't control the climate, the weather. A source of error is something you may do as an experimenter to then give your results a little, you know, make it a little bit less reliable or throw your results off in some way. And then finally, uh, a, precau a precaution is something, as, something that you should do as an experimenter to ensure that you are, you know, following safety protocols or just ensuring that your results will be reliable. Like, okay, I wanna ensure that as, a, as an experimenter, I wear my gloves or I don't mix the soils. I keep my soil samples stored different in different locations and I, and I don't use the same shovel to be mixing my loam soil and then, you know, have some of that get into my clay soil. But it's, it's what you do to make sure that this is a fair test. All right, so, so that's part one of just explaining what uh, the planning and designing lab is in a nutshell. And it is called planning and designing because this is all in your control now. You've been exposed to a problem or an observation. And like any scientist should be, you are now curious to say, what could be causing this? How can I now find a way to, to test? But it's all just a plan. It's nothing that is done. If you do decide to carry it out, to actually experiment based on the plan, 
it is that plan is now referred to as the proposal. And when you carry it out, it is called the implementation. 